my thinking in this was that, hey, if you've got a heat bed, and in this case, it was a, a nine and a quarter squared heat bed from an ender, five, what would I do with that? Well, if I, if I was going to do that, I thought, well, if you have an ender, um, maybe you want to use some of the extrusion from that, and this isn't one by one inch. This is 20 by 40, and then there's some 20 by 20 extrusion. So that's very popular um, outside the U.S., even inside the U.S. So I thought I'd show you an example of how I would do it here. Now, the big change in this, uh, despite, I mean, instead of the, the width of it, is that this design is actually utilizing uh, clamping these four corners to the side of the, the rail. So you're not going to get that ability to tension and use the strength of the frame um, you know, to, to tension the belt. So it is reliant upon uh, making sure that this part and this part, let me just isolate that, Uh, will be completely firm. And, you know, in my printed nuts that I put in the extrusion, um, there's four of them. You get quite a bit of surface area contact, uh, so it feels really strong right now. Over time, you know, we will see. Um, you may want to drill a hole right here and put a, uh, a stop in this frame. Now, it could be a pin, it could be a bolt. It wouldn't even have to be threaded if you didn't want to. You could just stick something in there. So when you tension on this end, on the tension end, uh, that if it slides because the tension is so strong, it, it butts up against a bolt or a screw sitting in there. Um, you could do the same thing on the idler side. Uh, let's see, how can I illustrate that? Uh, you know, there's, this is the tension side. Uh, but it would have to be equally strong on the idler side. Um, so if you wanted to drill a hole in this side and put something, you know, right around this area that uh, holds this whole printed piece in place in addition to the four screws and nuts, um, you know, that's something that you could do. But the reason I did that is because well, I have a few reasons, but I thought this actually takes less time to print. It's a smaller part. Um, one interesting thing about the difference between 2040 or 2020, uh, in this particular part, it's 2040, and one inch is that, you know, you can span the whole gap. Uh, you can, with your um, rollers, they come closer to the full height of this. And so let me just... So you can see, I'll just show a, a view on the side. Um, the belt itself, you know, it, it's up here. We still utilize the plate like the other printer um, there. That's the plate. And then here, the heated bed on this one is actually on top. Now, I put it on top for a couple of reasons. You know, I'll explain that here in a second. But um, you end up with a slightly thicker profile with the belt ex extending beyond the bottom of the 2020 and, and of course above the, t the 2040, I mean. Um, so this is gonna be a little bit taller. But the reason I did the heated bed like this is because um, I could have done a very complicated like cross, uh, you know, extrusion that goes across here. But I was actually trying to use this, I didn't wanna ruin the ender um, so I was using the stock frame, and I thought, oh, it'd be fun to just uh, use the parts that are in the box. So I, I didn't want to cut this frame, and I didn't want to cut this frame. So I kind of re replaced the base of it. So anyway, uh, I, I just made some different decisions, and, you know, they're subtle. Um, I, I did put feet on here. This could be, you know, because the other feet extended down beyond. We could make these the feet extend those down lower, extend these down lower. Um, but, you know, 
I, I made the decisions I made because uh, I wanted to make them. <laughs> so anyway, this is just a slightly different approach. Um, and I actually kind of like it. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. So let me just go through the differences. I won't recover the same ground. I won't replow the same soil. I will just point out the differences. So first and foremost, it's wider. Um, it's based off of utilizing as much of this printed bed, or I mean a heat bed, um, as possible. You cannot source a nine and a quarter inch wide uh, stainless steel shim stock off of McMaster car. It's actually 12 inches. So yeah, I'm going to have to cut. Uh, and that means one side is going to be factory and one side is going to be sketchy. Uh, but that's just what I decided to do. I wanted to utilize the whole area. And if I was going to utilize the whole area, I thought, well, if I want to put, um, I'm not sure. I sh I'm not sure that I show it. Yeah, I do. The gap in between here, well, I don't see the, I'm actually going to use uh, a little spacer, probably Delrin or something that's uh, a good insulator, but I'm going to, I'm going to gap in between this bed and this bed. So there'll only be a very tiny, uh, this, this ender actually, let me isolate this. This heat bed actually utilizes a uh, counter drilled screw hole. And so you could even utilize the, the parts that come with that printer. And you'll have to insulate this bed from the other one. You don't want to mount it directly to, uh, as I mentioned in the last one, you want to make sure the heat that transfers to this uh, aluminum plate or whatever you're using, um, it doesn't transfer. Now you'll get some transfer through the screws, like I said, um, but I don't think it'll be too bad. So this is specifically designed to be a heated bed as big as possible, has a smaller, you can tell down here, a, uh, well, let me show you. You can see this gray area down here at the end. This right here is the cold zone. So that's gonna be the cold zone. and. If you look carefully at the profile, you'll see, you might think it's a mistake. Well, it's not really a mistake, it's just um, laziness. <laughs> uh, this is going to you know, travel across the top of this heated bed, and then when it hits the corner there, it's gonna angle down at a very slight angle. Um, this was just the reused profile from the other drawing, and we had metal going all the way to that side. So it's gonna be a little bit different shape, um, it may warrant, uh, putting a, you know, something, the thickness of this heat plate on the end here as the cold section. I did have, uh, you know, in talking with Bill about how we're going to do this, um, we, I have some, uh, Peltier or Peltier coolers. Um, we could cut, you know, a void in the bottom of this, if I can get the Peltier, Peltier coolers on a separate piece of aluminum, that spans uh, this gap here on the bottom to cool it. Uh, you know, I'll leave all of that R&D for later. But so you're going to end up with a flat section here. Uh, there, that'll be the heated section. And then the cool end will be down here in the end. All right, so it's wider. Uh, the aluminum, uh, I don't know if it's extruded or not, but the aluminum rollers are going to be cut wider. Um, it reuses some of the same parts, but let me think. No, it does. Well, it does use the same printed part in here. Let me turn this off. Same printed part there. Um, the rest of the drive mechanism is the same except for the mount. Whoops. Let me show you the difference in the mount. So this mount, because it's a different extrusion, I wanted to utilize um, these two areas to kind of make sure it tracks straight parallel with the end. So that's a totally different part, but it's you know it serves the same function. Uh, same part in here. I think it's the same part here as well, but because the blocks 
on this end are totally different. I was able to fit these um, in here beside, instead of being just on the end, uh, butted up to the extrusion, um, these are beside and bolted into. So those are thin enough that it warranted making these end caps very slim. So all in all, this is not only wider, um, using extrusion that I think will be more popular, um, but it, it's actually less material if you wanted to build this one or a very variation of this again you don't need the heated bed you don't need this width you could do any size you wanted however long you wanted however wide you wanted um, you could do that and the prints are pretty fast in fact it's kind of shocking I know you don't get scale in this drawing but um, I printed all four of these corners at once I think it only took a couple hours uh, to print those four parts so and I simplify these parts so uh, let me just show you this part first um, you know a lot of the same stuff about the roller is true it functions the same way this is rolling not just oops this is rolling um, not just the uh, the aluminum you know drive roller but it's actually um, you know it's just the same as the other side so this is uh, just about the thinnest you can make a part that holds a bearing. So it's the same width as a bearing in here and the very little waste because that's going to actually butt up against the side of the extrusion. And this whole size is perfect. It just pops right in there. Um, you know, the depth of these screws I've chosen carefully so that it's off the shelf parts and not some weird depth. Uh, so that, those are the same, just less material. So the back, I mean, everything, like I said, it's very similar to the other one. Now, the front, though, is the biggest difference. And let me show you what I did here. Let me see if I can find this. Um, okay, let me, let me isolate this in, entire block. All right. So if you remember on the other side, um, and I don't remember if this block is mirrored or identical. So no matter. Um, I want to show you that I was able to do this with less parts. So in the other one, uh, yeah, less parts. The other one, it had a face plate. This one does not. And the other one had a uh, 516 screw, which is a fairly coarse thread and uh, the minute adjustments on it will be minimal. Um, so it had a nut in the middle with uh, a nut capture and a bolt and a faceplate. This one is just the printed block. And I'll show you more detail here in a second. But what this is right here is an eye bolt. Now I went down to um, Home Depot, and by the way, I drew this myself uh, most eye bolts, you know, right around this area in here, um, it's split. It's actually a straight piece of bar that's that curves around. I think they fabricated it by bending the, the bar. And then on this end, while it doesn't show threads, this end uh, does have threads on it. And then this, while not representative of a hex nut, this represents the hex nut. So I could have done a better job with that, but uh, this is the eye bolt. So if you go to Home Depot, you can get an eye bolt that is this size. I don't remember the size off the top of my head. Um, it's an it's an eye bolt, and I actually had to. This wasn't you know because we're mixing English, you know, inches and metric bar. So this does not end up being the exact. While it shows in the drawing that it's four millimeters. Uh, I actually had to drill that out slightly, very slightly. You could probably take a, a screwdriver, jam it in here on this side, pry it apart enough to accept the eight millimeter bar, but I just took a uh, stepped bit and it's, you know, cheap metal. It's not hardened steel or anything. Um, and I just drilled it out. So, and, and again, this is the hex nut on that side. Okay, so uh, there's washer. 
of course. And so I leave room here. And, you know, this could slide uh, this way or that if you need, uh, because as you tighten this bolt, this will actually, let me just illustrate that. This will actually move as you tighten it. Uh, it didn't illustrate anything. Let me try again. Yeah, this will move as you tension it. So, you know, you can't, right now, if you tensioned it that far, you'd be hitting the extrusion. So if you're going to use a lot of that tensioning ability that's built into this printed part, um, you know, there's that oval on the side. Uh, you'll have to move this whole thing down this direction to give yourself more room to be able to tighten, whoops, to be able to tighten that and go back. Okay, to be able to tighten this nut, it's going to pull this, so you're going to have to move the whole thing down. But anyway, uh, you can make that decision before you cut your belt. So it's, you know, um, not a big deal. So anyway, that's the, that's the main difference between the two. Um, these parts fit on the 40 by 20 extrusion. Um, it uses an eye bolt and a hex nut instead of uh, the 5 16 nut, standard nut and bolt. Um, and so the, it's just a little bit different. Mouse to the side. So the top plate, you'll get a top plate. Oh, and I'll show you this. It's worth mentioning. On the ender, there is uh, the thermistor rests here in the middle. They have a big like insulator pad, some capped on tape. So I thought, oh, I'll just cut out that middle section to allow that to mount without you know bending over the top of it. Um, if I were just to make this flat. So that's a relief to allow for the thermistor and the insulation. And then this right here, this hole here, is to allow for the wires on the end of the um, heat bed uh, to go down into the bottom. And so it's kind of hard to illustrate that. Let me see if I can show you. Turn off the stainless steel belt. Uh, this is again an optional, well, I don't think it's optional in this model because I don't actually show a cross plate. I simplified it by having a bottom and a top plate just be a sandwich to hold it um, as a frame. So, and I don't illustrate, well, how does this connect to this? Well, I don't know, that's your problem. <laughs> Um, I mean, I guess you could bolt through the end. Uh, you could, you could uh, not on this top one, but on the on the bottom one here behind this twenty by twenty extrusion, um, you could uh, thread and drill through this end here, uh, so that you could just bolt these together. That's probably what I'll end up doing. Um, so I haven't really thought through that. I did have some printed parts that kind of put these together, but I don't think it'll be extremely rigid. I think just a, a long bolt that goes through the end here and uh, which means you're gonna have to make a big circle here for the head of the screw. I think I'll just bolt them together on all four corners so that it is rigid. Uh, let's see. Um, but the this bottom plate, while I label it as optional, on this particular model I don't really think it's that optional. I think you're going to have to do that. Um, it does allow access in here um, because you're going to have to pull this back. This part is going to um, be tensioned back just with your strength. Once uh, this is tightened, you're going to leave this loose, pull back really hard, and then go through and start tensioning the four screws here. These are 25 millimeter screws. They're not in the picture to get this belt tight. So you'll tension that and I wanted to leave room in this optional part here. <laughs> I say optional, in this uh, bottom plate part. And this bottom plate is actually rather thin. Um, the reason is, well let me show you. Uh, the reason is when, if I were to put in a quarter inch acrylic uh, plate on the bottom and on the top, this would really get very fat. So this is using, what is that? 
three millimeter plate on the top, which what would that be? Eighth of an inch. Um, you could try using the same thing on the bottom here, but this is quite thin. There are some very, this is two millimeters. Um, you know, you can get some thin uh, aluminum or steel uh, that would that would fit in there just to kind of keep it square. Um, but I realize that the thicknesses of these plates aren't ideal if you're in the USA. Uh, it's just an illustration of how I built this thing. So let me find the stainless steel. Uh, there it is. So if you look on the side, anything beyond this minimal two millimeter plate is going to force this belt to bow out um, because the tolerance is, I'll, I'll zoom in, the tolerance is between the belt and the two millimeter plate. There's very little room here. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they rub. Um, now the, the screws are outside the belt, so the screws won't be a problem. It's just flat in between. Um, but if this belt is pushed out, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you could try a thicker plate on the bottom. You could even try a thicker plate on the top. Um, just realize that you're going to theoretically reduce the, and I always say theoretically because I'm not saying it won't work. I'm just saying that in theory here, that means less contact with the roller. So one other tip on the roller, um, when I, these come and they're pretty smooth. And so what I like to do is take a very, very rough piece of sandpaper, like 80 grit, aluminum oxide, you know, something that's real resilient. And I scuff this up, scuff, scuff the surface of this tube up uh, really, really rough. The rougher, the better. Um, and I go along the, you know, this direction, back and forth, end to end. I don't go this way because we want to create almost like little teeth in a gear. We want to create uh, friction in between that and the belt. And that'll give it enough grip. And then just the surface area uh, that is in contact with the belt will also do that. Now, I've had one guy tell me that, you know, these aluminum, the longer these aluminum tubes are, the more that they flex. And that is true. Uh, theoretically, you could, you could uh, put some discs or print something that fits inside here to help it with rigidity. You know, like uh, discs that not only just in come in contact with the end, like this part, but you could space those down uh, the, the shaft of this. It, it is hardened chromium steel, um, these bars. They don't tend to flex, but they do flex a little bit. So if the flex ends up being an issue, uh, I mean, you've got bigger problems. It's going to get complicated. But I thought about filling the center of this with something rigid like resin, um, to make it really, really thick, you pour some resin in there and then cap it on the end. Um, not really sure. I'll just play that by ear until it becomes a problem. But you do want a surface that touches the surface that touches that stainless steel belt to have some sort of texture on it. You don't want it polished smooth. You want it to be rigid. And I've got a buddy that has printed a part, and uh, that's also probably okay. But understand that if you print this roller, you're going to have lots of little lines, and it is going to reduce the surface area that, again, theoretically, comes in contact with this belt. So I would use the aluminum tube. It's faster. It's more true and straight and rigid. Um, you could experiment with different sizes of OD and ID. Make the thicker the, uh, you know, the 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 wall thickness. The thicker it is, the more rigid it'll be, and the, the straighter it will um, be under duress. But I don't think a lot of um, forces are going to hit the center of this. I think the forces are going to mainly be on the outside, and that's uh, just a theory. So anyway, that is the 20 by 40 extrusion printer belt uh, design spec, um, same system as the... Um, one by one inch from Faztech. So whether or not you're in the U.S. or whether you're in, uh, you know, Europe or somewhere else, uh, you should be able to get your hands on some of this extrusion, print some simple parts, 
and use your ingenuity to uh, solve the problems that will arise. Um, but this has been a lot of fun. Uh, whether it becomes a printer or an ejection belt system or is just a, a trial and error thing to see, you know, is this something that I want to integrate into a printer or a project? Um, I hope it's been helpful. Again, if uh, you want to support me, it's patreon.com slash brookdrum, and I'll keep the content coming. Take care.